Good afternoon. I am Kenya McDuffie, Councilmember for Ward 5 and Chair of the Council's Committee on Government Operations. Today is June 16, 2014, and we are in Room 123 of the John A. Wilson Building. The time is 3.57 p.m. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Committee on Government Operations. For the record, I'd like to note that we have a quorum which consists of Chairman Phil Mendelson, Ward 3 Council Member Mary Che, and myself. Today we have several measures before the Committee for consideration. We will be considering PR 20-742, the 1005 North Capitol Street Northeast Surplus Declaration and Approval Resolution of 2014, PR 20-763, the Young School Surplus Declaration Resolution of 2014, B 20-574, Board of Elections Nominating Petition Circulated Affidavit Amendment Act of 2014 and Bill 20-575, Party Officer Elections Amendment Act of 2014. I will start with Proposed Resolution 20-742. Proposed Resolution 20-742, uh, the 1005 North Capitol Street Northeast Surplus Declaration and Approval Resolution of 2014 was in introduced by Chairman Mendelson at the request of the Mayor on April 28, 2014. The Committee on Government Operations held a joint hearing for both resolutions on June 5, 2014. 1005 North Capitol Street Northeast in Washington, D.C., also known as Lot 0439 and Square 0674, has a square footage of approximately 8,925 square feet. The land is unimproved, and the Department of General Services has stated in its surplus analysis that after a deliberative process, it has de been determined that there is no viable district government use for the land. There is an accompanying resolution referred to the Committee on Economic Development, which would dispose of this land by transferring for purposes of developing a 100% affordable housing development, which will include permanent supportive housing. With that said, I'm recommending approval of PR 20-742. Is there any discussion on the report or the print? Council Member Che? Yes, now I understand that this we're just doing a surplusing and the disposition is separate, although you, you know, we tend to do these together, but I, I just wanted to ask you, is there already a plan in place for the people who will be displaced? Do you know? Uh, th currently there is, there is, this is a vacant lot, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, this is currently, it's a vacant oh, lot okay. on North Capitol Street. Oh, okay. Um, next to the old Kaiser building. So there, there's, this is unimproved land. There's no uh, structure okay. there at this point. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Any you. other discussion? Does this follow any of the uh, press pass? It does not follow the press pass. No, I'm not familiar with No. So I'm Chairman Mendelson? Um, there, there's some talk about PEPCO locating, relocating a substation. This uh, one? At like 11th and, not 11, uh, 1st and K. I don't think this is, there's a nexus between that and this. This is a property that is on North Capitol Street um, that has been vacant, uh, actually just unimproved vacant land for, for quite some time now. And this is a um, affordable housing project that uh, the Committee on Economic Development has been handling. Uh, I can speak to the surplus, obviously, the questions about the disposition. Uh, I have some information, uh, but not as much as probably the Chair of the Committee on Economic Development. Uh, no, no, I, I think I think I'm, my my question is answered. Thank you. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I move to approve the committee report and the committee print for PR 20-742, the 1005 North Capitol Street Northeast Surplus Declaration and Approval Resolution of 2014 and block with leave for staff to make technical and conforming changes. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it unanimously. Get the three of us voting. Next, we're going to move on to PR 20-763. PR 20-763 is a Young School Surplus Declaration and Approval Resolution of 2014, which, which was introduced on May 2nd, 2014. And as I noted earlier, a joint hearing was held on June 5th, 2014. Proposed Resolution 20-763 declares a surplus to Young School located at 820-26 Street Northeast. The Young School has not been used by D.C. Public Schools since 2008. After several unsuccessful solicitations, DGS resolicited the property and awarded the property to Two Rivers Public Charter Schools. The terms of the lease will be covered in the Committee on Economic Development, but I will note that it's customary for the leases, uh, for these leases, uh, the field space is. The, the grounds adjacent to the school are a part of the lease. Uh, with that said, I'm recommending approval of PR 20 763. Is there any discussion on the report or the print at this time? Uh, hearing none, uh, I move to approve the committee report and committee print for PR 20-763, the 
the Young School Surplus Declaration Resolution of 2014 in block with leave for staff to make technical and conforming changes. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Bill 20-574, the Board of Elections Nominating Petition Circulated Affidavit Amendment Act of 2014, conforms Section 8B3 of the District of Columbia Election Code of 1955 to reflect the amendments made by the Board of Elections Petition Circulation Requirements Amendment Act of 2013, which is Bill 20-245. Bill 20-245 became effective on October 17, 2013. As you may recall, this act abolished the registration and residency requirements for nominating and ballot measures petition circulators. This act also established a requirement that non-resident petition circulators register with the Board of Elections and consent to being subject to the subpoena power of the District of Columbia prior to circulating petitions. The Board of Elections Petition Circulator Requirements Amendment Act of 2013 inadvertently uh, did not amend the statements required in a petition circulator's affidavit pursuant to Section 8B3 of the District of Columbia Election Code of 1955. The Board of Elections Nominating Petition Circulator Affidavit Amendment Act of 2014 before us today simply corrects this error. I'm recommending approval of Bill 20-574. Is there any discussion on the print or the report? This is. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is the um, permanent to put into effect what we did on an emergency basis to uh, conform to um, case law on this subject with regard to, uh, um, I'm going to say, opening the field to who can circulate petitions, correct? That is that is precisely correct, Chairman Mendelson. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I move to approve the committee report and the committee print for Bill 20-574. Board of Elections nominating petition circulated affidavit amendment act of 2014 in block with leave for staff to make technical and conforming changes. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Finally, I'm recommending approval of Bill 20 575, Party Officer Elections Amendment Act of 2014. The Council passed Bill 20 560, Party Officer Elections Emergency Amendment Act of 2013 on November 5th. 2013. The effect of that emergency legislation permitted the political parties to hold the election of party officers during any regularly scaled primary, scheduled I'm sorry, primary. Accordingly, during this past April 2014 mayoral primary, major political parties held elections of their officers. Bill 20-575, the Party Officer Elections Amendment Act of 2013, will make this amendment permanent. Currently, party officer elections may only be held during presidential election years. The presidential election year requirement is not essential to the board's election, Board of Elections' proper and effective administration of local elections. However, to maintain efficiency, the Board of Elections does require that the political parties hold their elections when there is a scheduled primary election. The committee of print includes language recognizing major parties who are prohibited from holding their officer elections during any time other than a presidential election year. Is there any discussion on the report or print? Uh, Mr. Chairman, why is it that this um, uh, only permits the party election during a primary? As opposed to a general election? Yeah, that, the, uh, the answer may be somewhat obvious, but not necessarily follows. I realize a primary election is a party election. It's a party election. So, I mean, generally when we hold our primaries, it's for, obviously, as you know, Chairman Mendelson, for the uh, the parties that are registered uh, with the city to hold elections that are partisan based on party affiliation. And general elections, the winners of the primaries obviously are on the Correct. ballot for the general. Uh, the parties were, to the extent that you got comments from the parties, they were okay with this? Yeah, so we had uh, testimony. Uh, three of the parties showed up at the hearing. All four were contacted and, and, and asked to provide testimony. The uh, Democratic State Committee, the Republican uh, State Committee, and the, the Statehood Green Party all uh, participated in the hearing, provided testimony. Uh, we were in contact with the Libertarian Party. They were scheduled to provide testimony. I don't think we got any testimony uh, from them. They were scheduled to testify, but they didn't come or provide written testimony. So they're all okay with doing this? They're having their... Um no one who showed up to testify uh, opposed what we were doing in this bill. Okay. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the report or the print? Hearing none, I move to approve the committee report and the committee print for Bill 20-575, 
Party Officer Election Amendment Act of 2014 in block with leave for staff to make technical performing changes. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it unanimously. Uh, there being no further business before the Committee on Government Operations, the time is now 4.07 p.m. Uh, and this is, meeting is adjourned.